Good day, beloved of Christ. Welcome to prayer for Monday, the 10th of January. Today is an important day of commemoration as we remember Archbishop William Laud. Reading from For All the Saints, William Laud became Archbishop of Canterbury in 1633 and was executed 12 years later because of his program of reform. He sought to restore discipline in the Church of England and revive a sense of beauty and dignity in its celebration of the liturgy. Laud came to maturity when the established church was hard-pressed by Puritanism, a reform movement which offered individuals a spiritual discipline to sustain their experience of conversion. To counter this movement, he and his friends developed a rival discipline, a pattern of church practice which focused on the liturgy and outward acts of reverence. Laud himself once explained, quote, I take myself bound to worship with body as well as in soul whenever I come where God is worshipped. Even before he became Archbishop of Canterbury, the discipline was hated by a broad cross-section of English society. But after he was made Archbishop, he and his party became the scapegoats for everything else that seemed to be wrong in England. Laud did not relent, and the brutal punishment meted out to several of his critics only inflamed public opinion further. Parliament impeached him in 1640, and he languished in the Tower of London for over four years. When he was finally brought to trial, he defended himself so ably that Parliament decided to override the judicial process and passed a special act condemning him to death. He was beheaded on January 10, 1645. Nevertheless, Laud's vision of the church at prayer survived and became the standard of Anglican liturgical practice for the next two centuries. So, we honor him today for giving our tradition a richer sense of worship and a fuller delight in the beauty of holiness. Let us pray. O God, the everlasting sovereign, you ordain the whole of our nature for delight in the beauty of holiness, that we may reverence you with our bodies, even as we worship you with our souls. Lead us in the way of your servant William Laud, and grant us so to be minded of his service that we may never grow weary in our earnest care for the integrity and welfare of your church through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us take a deep breath as we continue. Lord, Open our lips together, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us together. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. O come, let us worship. Let's sing, or hum along with me, the Jubilate. Jubilate Deo, Jubilate Deo, Alleluia, Alleluia. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before God's presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God, God himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to God and call upon God's name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. And because of God's faithfulness we sing. You be late Deo. You be late Deo. Alleluia, Alleluia. Psalm 1 appointed for the day. Psalm 1 which sets out the whole Psalter's theme of worship of God and walking in God's ways and the blessings that come from walking with the Lord through life. 
Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on God's law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked who are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Together, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Giver of life, save us from the desert of faithlessness and nourish us with the living water of your word, especially through these discouraging and depressing pandemic times, that even in these days we may bring forth fruit that will last. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who is the light of the world and our light too. Amen. For the next while, we will be dipping into readings from the book of Genesis. Today we have Genesis chapter 2, verses 4 to 25. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground, but a stream would rise from the earth and water from the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil." A river flows out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it divides and becomes four branches. The name of the first is Pishon. It is the one that flows around the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good. Bedellium and onyx stone are there as well. The name of the second river is Gihon. It is the one that flows around the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is Tigris, which flows east of Assyria, and the fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken." Therefore, a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd like to read to you a note from the Jewish study Bible on verse 7 on the creation of human beings. The word play on Hebrew, Adam, which means human being, here translated man, and Adama, arable land, here ground, 
introduces a motif characteristic of this tradition, the relation of humankind to the soil from which it was formed. Human nature is not a duality of body and soul. Rather, God's breath animates the dust and it becomes a single living being. So two points I'd like to just emphasize here is that human beings, Adam, and the ground, arable soil, Adama, Adam, human, Adama, soil, they have the same root, of course. This is why at a funeral we say, from dust you have come and to dust you shall return. We are deeply and by our creation connected to the planet Earth. And for too long, the rise of the Enlightenment has caused to philosophical and materialistic rejections of our deep intimacy with creation and with the earth itself. This great divide between human beings and creation itself has caused not only our own alienation, but the ongoing exploitation of the world. Thanks be to God, we are awakening to the deep intimate relationship between us and the world and are beginning in very slow steps as a as a civilization to reappropriate our dominion over the earth which does not mean exploitive license but of creative caretaking secondly and this is a very typical jewish emphasis is that we are not made up of different parts we are one living creature we in the west and the christian west usually speak of a human beings as bipartite body and soul or tripartite body soul and spirit the jewish tradition that jesus himself would have been immersed in would have only seen a human being as a living being, one united living creature of God. So when we say the Shema, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength, these is not, this is not to separate us into different component parts, but to emphasize the totality of our being called to worship and love and to serve God. The point that I'd like to emphasize in the creation of a woman is the deep connectedness, the intimacy, the unity we were created for in being male and female. In our current age, we see more and more the fluidity of gender. And so male and female should not be seen as exclusively binary, either or, but as two important points on the spectrum of human gender. I think a main point is that we are made for intimacy with another, to be united with another, that we not be alone, but that we experience God and our truest self in intimacy of self-giving love with another. There are many challenges that people experience in this fallen world in our desire for and creation for intimacy with another loving other. Notwithstanding our own experience of such an intimacy, may we all experience the intimacy of God who is nearer and dearer to us than our own breath. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord, guard and direct your church in the way of unity, service, and praise. Together, Lord, hear our prayer. Give to all nations an awareness of the unity of the human family. Deliver your creation from the ravages of this pandemic and encourage all good decisions by health care providers and our government leaders. Lord, hear our prayer. Cleanse our hearts of prejudice and selfishness and inspire us to hunger and thirst for what is right. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach us to use your creation to your greater praise, that all may share the good things you provide. For a just, equitable, and timely distribution of the world's resources of the vaccine, Lord, hear our prayer. 
Strengthen all who give their energy or skill for the healing of those who are sick in body or in mind. Especially, O Lord, draw near to our frontline workers who are battling high demands in the healing arts and also staff shortages. Lord, hear our prayer. Set free all who are bound by fear and despair. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant a peaceful end and eternal rest to all who are dying and your comfort to those who mourn. This day we think of the Navaratnam family as they mourn the passing of dear Blossom. Rest eternal grant to her, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. May her soul and the souls of all the departed rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Gathering our prayers Let us pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. The blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and all that you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Have a great day today, Monday, the start of a new week in God's grace.